Hello, my name is Michal and today we're going to talk about PNP encouplers. So why would you actually need a PNP encoupler? Well, these bad boys are used to interconnect different subnets together for transfer of data while ensuring electrical isolation between them. How does it work? Each coupler has two sides. Each side is a device of its own with a transfer area. The I.O. controllers on each side of the coupler talk to the respective transfer areas and the coupler copies the data across. This makes a PNP encoupler really useful when you want to talk between identical cells, for example, as both sides of the coupler can actually be using the same address range, which equates to modularity of design. But also, as it's just a predefined transfer areas that get passed between the cells, a PNP encoupler can actually serve as a security device, not allowing any other sort of comms to pass through. Okay. So we know what the PMP encoupler is now, or at least we get a gist of it. Let's go to the fun part, engineering. Okay, so what we'll do in our scenario, let's imagine we have a machine that consists of few cells, the cells are identical. Uh, and let's actually replicate this first in TIA. So project, new project, I'm going to call the project PMP encoupler. This is what we are talking about today. There you go. So the project is empty. Uh, we are now going to add ourselves some hardware. As I said, we're going to have two identical cells. So each of these cells will have a PLC. Uh, it's going to also have, what do we want? It's going to have a drive. Okay, so a G120C drive. Uh, no, 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 no Profibus, no, God, no. Uh, with Profinet. Yeah, and maybe we are also going to add also some distributed IOs, just so that you know it looks like it could actually do something. It's not just a PLC. Yeah, and I said we are going to have two of these. Okay. So on the left hand side, let's call this uh, cell one. This would be our cell two. So now I'm going to assign these guys to my PLC1, these guys to PLC2. As I said, they are identical, which means that also my IPs on both sides are identical. So this would actually narrow down any options that I have in terms of communication, because I couldn't do any TCP comms um, between these guys when they have uh, the same IP addresses. I couldn't do any direct um, profinet comms between these two IO controllers. So there's not a lot of things that I could actually do, is there? I mean like as soon as I put them both on the same on the same network, like uh, this is not gonna even gonna let me um, even if I wanted to you know, create something like a certain connection between them, it wouldn't be too happy because as you can see immediately uh, I would get an error saying <laughs> the addresses are the same. There's no way I can talk to this guy. Okay, so undo this. So the only option really would be a PNP encoupler for us. Because as I said, the PNP encoupler actually decouples the networks as well. It decouples it el el electronically um, while it transferred the, transferred the data, the predefined data sets from one side to the other. So let's look for a coupler in our catalog. So there you go, the couplers actually sit under, ooh, yes, this is what I wanted. No, these are my GSD files. Let's go back here again and look. Here, there you go, this makes more sense. Network components, gateways, PMP and couplers, and there's our coupler. So let's drag and drop this guy here. Uh, we're going to assign the left hand side of our coupler to PLC1 and the right hand side to PLC2. And now our coupler is multi assigned. So we have two cells, uh, they are on the same IP addresses, uh, and both are connected to our coupler. But our coupler actually consists of, of two different devices. And now, the interesting fact again is that if you look at the left hand side, it's in 04 but the right hand side is in 04 as well. So also both sides of the coupler have exactly the same addresses. So the configuration is exactly the same. 
So let's say these two cells are passing a product between each other. So maybe the first cell will be some, uh, some laser cutting and the other um, cell will be doing some, some milling. And you know, as soon as the laser cutting process is done, it needs to pass some data regarding the process itself, maybe you know, what it did to, to the product and maybe some information about the product to the second cell. So how could we pass this information using a PNP and coupler? Well, I would always recommend using user data types. So we go here, PLC data types, add new data type, and let's call this data type product info. Maybe product tracking would, would make more sense, but hey, uh, we'll have fields like product ID, Oh, I'm really bad at making things up. Uh, so we have product ID. Okay, you know what? Let's just go, yeah, let's call them random. So we will have a few different fields, okay? And this will be for a, a product. So product ID could be something like unsigned dent maybe. And then we will get, we're gonna add ourselves an end, a isn't, I don't know, some words, word, and you get the gist of it, you know, different things, okay? Now, I guess this would be for a single product, but let's say the products are on a, a tray, a, something like a tray, maybe. So I could have maybe an array of these because I could have 10 products. So let's add ourselves a new data type that's going to be our, our tray. And this tray will be basically an array of product info. So array of product info, and you have an array here of uh, product info. And I said an array of zero to nine, okay? Or maybe, you know, it will be three by three, so zero to eight, nine products. There you go. For our data here, yeah? So we have this. Now, how are we gonna put it inside our, our PNP and couplers? Let's go and configure our PMP and coupler. If you go here to PMP and coupler, open the properties, click on one side, and go to transfer mapping. This is where you can define what data the coupler is to expect and to copy to the other side. So, as you can see, it's mapping of the IO data from profit interface X1, so left hand side, to X2. And this is how you set this up. And it, it is really, really easy here. All you need to do is you need to add yourself some transfer areas. So we add the transfer area. Uh, let's call this area out for uh, product. So we change this to be an output. And now the funny thing is like, you need to define the length. Now you should be careful with this. And like ideally the length should correspond to the data you're sending. So you shouldn't be defining uh, a big transfer area if you're not sending this information because it will still want to exchange it. It's not going to cause you major issues, but if you, if you do it all over again, uh, it will be basically sending data where you not, don't need to send data necessarily, which might be hammering your network. So I'm going to say that the length is 200 bytes, but this is going to fit actually is the question. We'll see in a moment, okay? So we set this in uh, as 200 bytes. Uh, we say that our first output address is going to be on Q2000. Uh, okay, so this on the left hand side, on PLC1. Now on PLC2, this corresponds to an input area of 200 bytes, and we're going to uh, set the I address as, let's say, I3000. Okay, so this is how it's going to map it to PLC2. So that's done, as I said, I have no idea if this is gonna fit or not. Uh, how can I check? Well, let's just go to the next step. What is the easiest way to get my data here? Well, one thing you could do, you could just go and make yourself a move block. Yeah, take your data and move your data to different places. Ah, uh, see, uh, it's a ball. There you go, yeah. But this is not recommended, it's a no-no. So let's delete this one and let's go to PLC tags, add ourselves a tag table. I'm going to create myself a, a tag table specifically for, for product tracking. I just need to keep it, uh, like to keep it, you know, neat and organized. So product tracking, 
and here I'm going to just add a new a tag of data type and um, uh, what is this array? Yeah, uh, what did our area start at for PMP and coupler? We started Q2000. So I go ah so come on. I go back here and say, okay, this thing started Q2000. And now, let's call it a tray as well. Oh, sorry. Um, tray tag. Nice. Okay, and now as you can see, it's mapped everything for me automatically. So the thing, they just have correct addresses. If I change my, my data type, it will remap it. So I'm just starting at Q2000. And my last tag is at Q2143.4. So we are actually occupying what? At 144 bytes. So I can go here and say it's 144, but I'm just going to leave it at 200 bytes. It's still fine, and I have, have some extra space if I want to add things. Now, the fun fact is in one transfer area, you can only have 243, yeah? So if I wanted to put 255 uh, output bytes, for example, I would need another transfer area. Let's pretend that this limit is 100, even if it's not, uh, and I would then create myself a new transfer area. So I call it out product 2. Let's say you, know, you just need to transfer more data than 253 bytes. Uh, and you say it's output, OK? If you say you know, that this thing just starts at uh, 2, what is it, 2, 100, and again has 100 bytes. This is just gonna, you know, span from uh, 2100 to 2199. But the product tracking tags, they, they will just, just just span as they were. So even if you if you, you know find a certain situation where you need to send more than 253 bytes, you are still in the good. You know, with this approach, you don't need to actually think about it. You just add another transfer area, and your tags span as much as they actually need, even if it's across transfer area. So this is actually. Uh, quite a neat solution. So this is on, on PLC one side for sending data. Now on PLC two side, I'm also going to need my add myself a uh, data type. Yeah. So let's grab these two data types. Yeah, I have same data types here in this PLC as well. And I'm going to add myself. Or even you know what? Why why add things? Like if I can copy things over. It's always better than adding them. So I'm going to get this product tracking here. There you go. And now um, I think it was what i3000. It should start. Let's just double check. Group device and networks again. PMP and coupler properties, module parameters, transfer mapping. And we said that this area starts at. 3000, and let's make sure that this starts in the right place as well. Yeah, so again, we are receiving data from i3000 uh, down to i3143.4. Now, if you download the PLCs, it's basically it, your communication is configured, and you're done. Voila. Thanks for watching. If you have any, any questions regarding this, please do comment. Do not hesitate to, to let us know. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.